Hey everybody, so now that the dust has settled from Oath of the Gatewatch, um, and I've been able to get a few games in, I had the idea to do a top 10 list featuring cards that I thought would be relevant for EDH. So without further ado, let's get into it. Number 10. I'm lumping these two big old Eldrazi's together because I feel like they'll see some decent fringe play, but probably only in very specific decks. Endbringer strikes me as the kind of card that monocolorless or heavy artifact decks would want to run. He can fill three very relevant roles, pinging for damage, drawing cards, or denying attacks and blocks. What makes him even better is that he gets to untap during opponent's untap steps. That means we're going to be able to do a lot of card draw, denial, or damage throughout a game. Worldbreaker seems like a shoo-in for any Animar deck. His ability triggers on cast rather than enter the battlefield, which makes him a great way to deal with Torpor Orb. Additionally, it's exiled and not destroyed, and he has ways to recur himself from the graveyard. His biggest detractor is his cost. But, for the right deck, he could be very useful. Number 9. If you've seen any of my EDH deck tech videos, you'll know that MTG Ducky and myself love a good tribal deck, so it should really come as no surprise that General Tazri makes my list. I really enjoy the new cohort and rally mechanics, and Tazri will cap off any deck by providing your allies with potentially repeatable ally specific tutor and overrun effects. Number 8. Countering spells outside of blue, and on the rare occasion white and black, is pretty rare, which when coupled with a modal spell makes me think that this has some serious applications for the format. The removal option has some decent targets, and the token's okay, but I feel the counter is what makes this card a real consideration. I know in my own experience that having this in hand with a deck like Krenko can be a real lifesaver where a board wipe can set us back huge amounts of turns. Number 7. I've been calling Crush of Tentacles the fair Cyclonic Rift, mostly due to the fact that it hits you and this is at sorcery speed. The card is pretty flavorful, and I like that you can get a token if you cast it for the surge cost, but I don't think this will break or warp the format to such an extent that Rift does. Number 6. I feel like Gift of Tusks has been mostly overlooked. I'm always in the market for ways to get rid of abilities, and for the cost of only one blue mana, this can often swing blocks in our favor. This can deal with Avacyn, Oldamog, aka Ulamog before the new reprint, and any other large, troublesome, indestructible, or otherwise difficult to remove creatures. Number 5. I'd rank Mirapool higher if it weren't for the fact that it's limited to only creatures or spells you control, and if it didn't come into play tapped. It's already a very incredible land to begin with, and I can understand how R&D's reasoning to keep it locked to you, but could you imagine how broken it would be if it weren't without these restrictions? Ugh, so good. Number 4. I'd say 9 out of 10 times that this Chandra will be used exclusively for her zero ability. She lacks a real way to protect herself, but having the option to wheel plus draw a card the turn she comes out isn't too shabby. I could see her in some Doretti decks, or ones that abuse Psychosis Crawler. Number 3. What does EDH love more than creatures with strong enter the battlefield effects? Ways to abuse and reuse them, of course. Eldrazi Displacer is more restricted than, say, Rune or Mist Meadow Witch, but having the instant bleak of a restoration for only 3 mana, one of which has to be colorless, seems very clutch. Bear in mind that the creature does come into play tapped, which can be an issue for blocking, but let's be honest, most of the time you'll be doing this for the end of turn to get the extra trigger. Number 2. My throbbing love for Tribal is showing right now. This little guy does so much for only 4 mana. Life gain? Yup. Makes tokens? Check. Exiles creatures as they go to the graveyard? Big ol' check. Relevant sacrifice ability? Check, 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 check. This could be the card that brings together mono black vampires and mono black zombies after all the years of forced segregation. Can you imagine all of the lords we could run? <laughs> Number 1. Hedron Alignment is the single greatest enchantment ever printed in Magic the Gathering. It completely wrecks Sneak Attack and Omnis- no, 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 can't do it. My number one pick is Kozlik the Great Distortion. EDH's favorite colorless draw spell is back and better than ever. Acting as a pseudo-disrupting shawl, don't expect to be countering everything. Counters with card advantage will rarely win you the game on their own, but if you think of Kozlik more as a safety net, I think you'll find that it can be a huge boon to your deck. I can see him functioning very well in a Damia or a Zami control deck where you're already drawing a ton of cards and can pitch them with less of an issue. Well gang, that was my review of Oath of the Gatewatch for EDH staples. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you found any cards that you really enjoyed in EDH from the set. I'd be really interested to hear from them. And as always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe.